Hello and welcome to this little video. Today I'm going to be having a read from this fella. This is Songbird, a Nightingale story, and this was written back in 2019. And it's regarding one of, like, basically one of my fan favourite characters, the Nightingale, who was at the time of, sort of like, the writing of this part of the universe, um, the regent of the children of Cain, the, the vampires in um, it's like my Splucci-verse. Um, this is like a little origins novella, really, um, explaining a few things about how she came into being, and also sort of like putting in the bigger picture, so to speak. Um, but before I go on, please give me a quick like, give me a quick subscribe, that'd be absolutely fantastic. Um, so, yeah, here we go. From what I recall, it was the hacking painful cough that would not go away when I realised things were bad. Very bad. However, looking back on it, there had been numerous other warning signs, instances that had screamed, run away now. The first was down to something as simple as a conversation. Did you clean all this on your own? The voice made me jump. I had not heard anyone enter when I'd been at the far end of the nave, putting the finishing touches to the polishing of the pews. In my head, a beautiful tune was ebbing and flowing across my brain, drawing me into its embrace. I'd had no idea what the melody was or from where it had originated, but it was wonderfully relaxing, serene. It felt like the first light rain on a warm spring day, and it helped to keep me fresh as I toiled, sweat rolling down my back. Not that I was permitted to sing along to it. I almost banged my head on the back of the pew as I knelt up with a start. A dark-haired, neatly dressed woman was stood at the end of the row, near the small, plain font. She was looking straight at me. I frantically cast my head from side to side, looking to see if my employer was in the vicinity. I dared not break one of his rules. Only that morning he had decided that his breakfast had been lacking and I burst into a rant about how the lack of effort in one's work was one of the sins of Nineveh, leading to proclivity towards sloth and gluttony. The woman leant her head to one side and granted me a curious look through her dark-rimmed spectacles. Ah, you are not allowed to talk to strangers. She sat down at the end of the pew, her finely tailored clothes not demonstrating so much as a crease. Her eyes faced forward, towards the rude screen, and more specifically, the cruciform figure that hung upon it. So I shall sit here, and perhaps I shall talk, and you will just listen. Agreed? I was still nervous, but it seemed acceptable. I was not technically breaking a rule. I could carry on my chores whilst the woman talked. I nodded as I resumed my polishing of the woodwork, albeit with somewhat less attention than before. There was an entrancing nature about the woman that made me want to listen to every word she said. It's funny how places change, yet intrinsically remain the same, she mused, her eyes not once leaving the crucifix. I used to come here regularly as a young girl. The lad I was courting was in the choir. I guess I just drifted into the community alongside him. I was never really a churchgoer, but this place drew me in, like it does so many others. She rose noiselessly from her seat, and I watched her walk towards the centre of the nave, where north, west, south and east meet. She bent down, removed the fine leather glove, and let the tips of her delicate fingers touch the cold stone floor. I miss that young man so much. He gave everything. I couldn't help myself. Was he killed? Her reply was no more than a whisper. Worse. Then for an instant I was aware of something most strange. My senses seemed to deceive me as I heard muffling, sh muffled shouting. I spun my head around, thinking it was the vicar. But we were still quite alone, even though I could distinctly hear the tones of a male voice shouting in the church. The words were obscured, unintelligible. 
but they carried um, anger amongst them. Then there was the sound of metal on metal, a clashing sound of swords. But this was nothing compared to what followed. The noise that seemed to fill the church was something that I could not comprehend. It was a roar, a shriek so primal that my guts turned to jelly. It sounded like a number of beasts of hell screaming out at once before launching a deadly assault. Then there was peace. Then there was sorrow. I looked at the dark-haired woman and saw that she was crying, a solitary tear caressing her pale cheek. As she wept, I was aware of two things. First was the tune in my head from before, crescendoing, wrapping itself around me, encompassing me and lifting me high from this place, through the stars, across countless galaxies, Yet all the while I was stood here watching this curious woman demonstrating her reserved grief. The second was an accusatory shout. Girl! The music fled back to whatever shadow it hid within, and the lonely tear miraculously evaporated from the woman's cheek as the vicar stormed out of the organ chapel and into the nave. You are supposed to be working, he scolded me, not bothering those who come seeking solitude. Sorry, Vicar, I whispered, snatching up my cloth and returning to my duties. I am so sorry, my dear, he fawned upon the visitor. My maid is ignorant and does not appreciate that the faithful requires space for their prayer and contemplation. The woman eyed him up and down before throwing me a quick glance. Sir, I believe that your young girl appreciates far more about this place than you ever could. With that, she turned her back on the cleric and walked out of the church, leaving me alone with my employer. That was the first of many nights I was made to sleep outside. It rained and I was soaked through by morning. But this did not concern me that much. For with every drop of blessed water that struck my chilled skin, I heard note after note of the tune that had reached out to me that afternoon. I let it lift me from that dreadful place and transport my soul across the skies and stars. It soothed me that night and many more to follow. Hope you enjoyed that. Like I say, a little extract from Songbird, A Nightingale Story. You can find this and all the rest of my books over on my website, aschambers.co.uk. Take care. I'll see you again soon. And keep looking for what lurks in the shadows.